Oh, here. Hello, one, two. There it is. Testing. We're away. It's American Dissonance. I'm your host, Vincent Easley, the second. RealLibertyMedia.com. Find the uh, past cast, the uh, archives at RealLibertyMedia.com forward slash author forward slash vine. And uh, I'm going to grab up some notes here in a minute. I've got the uh, the R log, the radio log blog page ready to uh, to publish. I do believe, unless I have some amendments, and I probably won't. But uh, so I tuned up here pre-tunication with uh, with Queen. And it worked out just almost perfect where I came in there to uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, which, uh, of course, uh, you start talking about Scattermoosh and Scaramouse, uh, but that's that's to come here uh, in hitting pieces. Uh, today on American Dissonance, this is the uh, seven, seven years since the uh, standoff. Let me go back over here. Um, I've thrown myself out of order just a little bit, but I think I'll catch up real quick. Um, what we saw on April 12th of 2014 was, even if a tactical move on the part of the government, a major historical victory for our constitutional rights from state sovereignty to the Second Amendment, to the First Amendment, to the Tenth Amendment, and more. It was a peaceful victory heard round the world without a shot fired by we the people against the Bohemia federal government. The sight of heavily armed paramilitary BLM troops backing away from the crowd of cowboys, families, and legally armed militia was an image that will remain in the American consciousness for generations to come. Of course, the mainstream media has done their best to play down the importance and memory of it and continues to skew and paint as uh, us as extremists and rapists, <laughs> rapists, yeah, rape, racist. In uh, Harry's Harry Reid's words, that is a domestic terrorist. Well, myself more of a domestic tourist standing in the gap. Uh, the bu Battle of Bunkerville, April twelfth to twenty fourteen, and that we may stand in the gap. Uh, I've got correspondence here from some last post from Facebook and uh, might come back to that mama bear how to do there uh, United States versus Bundy it's case number uh, 216CR 00046-GMN dash PAL it's uh, in parentheses D hey there goes some C-130s right overhead cool I'd run out there and wave at them they about high enough uh, they can see me Interesting story. You remember that one, Chloe, when uh, they were flying over one night and I was walking across the field and you uh, know fla flashed the flashlight at them and they they flashed back. That was kind of neat. So <laughs> as I interrupt myself, yes, this is the uh, Bundy Ranch uh, standoff and trial report by me, Vincent Easley the second. I was a witness for the trial, uncalled because the uh, case of, of course was dismissed with prejudice extremely is the battle battle of bunkerville was set off in the spring of 2014 headed by the u.s department of the interiors blm it's the bureau of land land management along the virgin river in southern nevada on the on the other side were, were several hundred americans standing in the gap in a peaceful pushback as both a protective bu a buffer for the bundy family and to protest the government's roundup and attempted confiscation of several hundred head of Bundy cattle. This is historic in current events, live stream, video, and radio broadcast, as I have reported from the ranch in 2014 and in 2017-18 at the federal trial in Las Vegas and continuing the coverage and as witness for the defense. I want to pick up these notes over here. This is uh, my excerpts and from the pretunication um, here today. And I will come back and hit some of these again uh, over and over perhaps on Ammon Bundy. Um, standoff or uh, showdown. So Ammon's been, uh, he's back in the news and he has a, a no born warrant issue for, for him. We'll come back and uh, get some of the backstory on that. Um, but this pretunication, it, it is uh, hitting pieces. 
Well, now it's a party. MSM setting the narrative. Uh, everything but a mixtape, that is, uh, or a couple's retreat. Uh, where the pen is the sword. Uh, don't pull a hypothetical gun. There's verbal role play. Uh, our roots are where, are where we come from. Uh, where we're at is what matters. Do not take this journey lightly. There's no retreat. It ain't over. It's like the ass. Uh, he's stubborn and, and, and immu immovable. <laughs> yes, move. That's a cow. Wait. I'm, ass ain't a... <laughs> Okay, stop. <laughs> where was I? Yes, being the ass. Okay, thoughts. Thoughts and good deeds. Uh, keep yourself alive. Well, that's where we're at, and uh, we look at uh, some stumbles along the way. Uh, Got to be really careful. Let me come say, uh, no brain. Thank you, Grimner. Hee haw. Yeah, it's the uh, the, uh, ye, the what what they call us the uh, vanilla ices and y'all Qaeda. <laughs> that was so clever. I hope to get back some more cleverness in the. Uh, and some of the twits over there, uh, or the, you know, the tweeters. Oh, I was going to say something else. Keep yourself alive. Uh, oh, but we'll find a way. Life has just begun. How beautiful you are. Misfits, malcontents, come together. It's a condolence. Always the person I was meant to be. The stranger of morality to exist with unbridled joy going beyond boundaries and don't you know me because we are the champions here's some notes that I didn't get uh, compiled it'd be a lot more on the uh, the Bundy Ranch saga and where they come from and which I'm going to touch into more with uh, uh, a couple of uh, authors or writers uh, journalists um, but a flock of seagulls. I didn't go there. It's a bird, bird story. Uh, but what really matters? Nothing. Scare much? Scare moosh. Ah, back to the theme of Queen. Clean up your mess. It's an answer on accountability. What do you want from me? Almost everything. Open my eyes. Your life is going to be very difficult. Bring giants and priests to confess. Ready? As all the darkness you left behind comes creeping in. Come find me when you find yourself. With mud in your face. And putting you in your place. Are you on the edge of your seat? Puritan or pervert? Plucked? Pulled from the articulation of me. The uh, paraphrased plagiarist. And give the audience the performance they want. Good words, good thoughts, good deeds. Paid your dues. Doesn't necessarily mean you've uh, championed the cause till the end. There's nobody on demand. Get a grip. Not your guy? I don't care. My ruffles have been rigid. <laughs> There's no fire in the kitchen. No one's sleeping with the help. And that comes from the heart of Dixie. And a clean slate. I have more in this other one over here. Oh, wait. Those are my notes on how to do this. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I'm turning pages. Yeah. So this is kind of a story about maybe some people call them no hat or all hat and no cattle. Or all boots and no buckles. And, uh, this man, he says, uh, do not resist. Or assist. What they're trying to say he does. They're talking about Ammon and Bundy. So, here's a funny one for you. My brother-in-law, yeah, he's married to my sister. That what there makes him my brother-in-law. <laughs> I mean, come on now. I, I, I'm jumping out just a little bit. But I'm talking about how they really treat uh, <laughs> all chaps no ass. Thanks, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> I'm backing up. I think I backed up too far here <laughs> into last week. So I think I might have I might have gathered them up here. Did I? Did I? I'm gonna turn another page just to make sure. And then I'm gonna go back over here to what I got uh, already printed up. <laughs> That's funny. 
<laughs> okay. Now then, if I can get myself back on on tab. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, I'm going to start up at the top here in the uh, what I've got going here for to uh, publish. Standoff or showdown. Ammon Bundy. It's a standoff or a showdown. See, I ain't quite got that one put together. Which one is it? It's a war of conscience. And there was a man. Ammon Bundy. This is the war in the West. The Bundy Ranch seven years later. Thanks for this one, Donna. Everyone has a point, even if you don't get it from that movie there. Uh, and I'm trying to do this. You are what you do, not what you say you'll do. Becoming the medium. Journalism does need defense. needs the truth. So I asked you, too, to be the medium. What do we got going on here? Some swivel disobedience. And I use this part here again from last week. All we do is done with an eye to something else. And... <laughs> Here's one to look up for you. The mask, well, look up at the uh, Mobius Strip. So the mask, Mobius Strip of Arrest. And that's what we go, got going on with them and Bundy. It's like, uh, well, we'll get into the story, and I'll, I'll bring you some from the mainstream about how uh, he's gone to protest, and then he's uh, kicked out and arrested, and then can't get back into court for not wearing that, uh, that Mobius uh, mask. In God's image, hitting pieces uh, from C.S. Lewis, there's three kinds of men. And, and I think I want to go back maybe at the end, and, and uh, I have some some uh, video, which will be audio here to, to include. And I think that would be that also. I don't know if uh, Grimner keeps putting this stuff over to stupid YouTube, where uh, I, I hate to get a... Uh, copyright strike well it is this is a fact finding mission for a just war it is in progress Clive and Bundy said we are trading one form of slavery for another now here they are I've got these links all lined up here uh, and I think I want to come back and play these at all to, towards the end there's some that's a little long that will only be in uh, in part uh Fifteen minutes in. Then we've got down to, uh, well, I'm skipping around here. There, there's quite a bit here. I think I almost want to play this all off in order. Um, like I said, this first one, though, but it's important. Yeah, come on, let's do it. And we might not not give this over to YouTube. Bit shoot in here at the uh, the blog page. This is important in the idea of working up to the story and who uh, Ammon Bundy is. The portrait that's that's given him by the mainstream media. So this is three minutes. Let's let's do it. Let's include it. It's coming up. It's been in here to play. And it is in the uh, radio log blog to uh, credit. Thirty-nine. Three Kinds of Men First published in the Sunday Times, 21st of March, 1943, this essay was published in Present Concerns, 1986, and then in Compelling Reason, 1998. There are three kinds of people in the world. The first class is of those who live simply for their own sake and pleasure, regarding man and nature as so much raw material to be cut up into whatever shape may serve them. In the second class are those who acknowledge some other claim upon them, the will of God, the categorical imperative, or the good of society, and honestly try to pursue their own interests no further than this claim will allow. They try to surrender to the higher claim as much as it demands, like men paying a tax but hope, like other taxpayers, that what is left over will be enough for them to live on. Their life is divided, like a soldier's or a schoolboy's life, into time on parade and off parade, in school and out of school. But the third class is of those who can say, like St. Paul, that for them to live is Christ. Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 these people have got rid of the tiresome business of adjusting the rival claims of self and God, 
by the simple expedient of rejecting the claims of self altogether. The old egoistic will has been turned round, reconditioned, and made into a new thing. The will of Christ no longer limits theirs, it is theirs. All their time in belonging to Him belongs also to them, for they are His. And because there are three classes, any merely twofold division of the world into good and bad is disastrous. It overlooks the fact that the members of the second class, to which most of us belong, are always and necessarily unhappy. The tax which moral conscience levies on our desires does not, in fact, leave us enough to live on. As long as we are in this class, we must either feel guilt, because we have not paid the tax, or penury, because we have. The Christian doctrine that there is no salvation by works done according to the moral law is a fact of daily experience. Back or on we must go. But there is no going on simply by our own efforts. If the new self, the new will, does not come at his own good pleasure to be born in us, we cannot produce him synthetically. The price of Christ is something, in a way, much easier than moral effort. It is to want him. It is true that the wanting itself would be beyond our power, but for one fact. The world is so built that, to help us desert our own satisfactions, they desert us. War and trouble, and finally old age, take from us one by one all those things that the natural self hoped for at its setting out. Begging is our only wisdom, and want in the end makes it easier for us to be beggars. Even on those terms, the mercy will receive us. Okay. Now the importance of that is is coming up to... Uh, Hey, it's 420 somewhere. Salute. Um, it's the attack on the character of, of the Bundys uh, in their founding faith of the, the Latter-day Saints Mormon Church. Uh, and again, that comes up. Let me go to it. Um, an author. And, and I found refreshing. And I, I think that she has a... a taken a change in direction for, for the positive in her reporting uh, quality. I'm not at the right one. Um, which is a good thing. So I, I've got her book I've been listening to here, and I'm partway through, but let me give you her name. Dadgum. My, my tab shut down. I'm going to reopen, sure enough. So i got to go way down to search it out. Um, actually, I can do it from back of the blog page. I've got that lined out. I'll just continue in order here. Um, and I'm thinking, do I want to play this right here? Let me skip those and come back. Yeah. So Ammon Bundy has been arrested twice in one day in Idaho. The story has made national news once again. Folks will appreciate, uh, well, I'm sorry, folks will speculate on talk radio and social media why Mr. Bundy continues to fight the government. Let's open this up. This is uh, from uh, KIDO Talk Radio. Um, as it's spinning to open. I think I'm going to have a long show here today. I do believe. Because i got a lot in here to include. And I believe it's all important. For setting the record here. Uh, I don't remember if this one had audio to it, but it's uh, spinning here. Let me just bear with me here. This is from 107.5 FM and 580 AM KIDO Talker Radio. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've got so many tabs up in here. <laughs> Krimner. Yeah, 500 tabs? 50 tabs? How many? La, la, la. Um, there's a this is in the R log. All these links, and uh, there's a lot, a lot of interviews through here. It's just so slow. Okay, come on now. What do I got going on here? This is uh, slow, slow. Um. Let me go over here while that's doing that. No, there it is, finally. Hey, thank you. 
let me try to scroll up just a little bit I think that's only a picture yes yes come on come to me that's uh, the video don't play <laughs> and it's sticking again okay and instead of spinning this uh, I'm jumping ahead so then spend instead of spending the rest of his life uh, peacefully in Emmett Idaho Emmett Bundy has taken a different path he has become a force for patriots to rally against the government in Idaho he is choosing the path of, uh, I call it swivel. I didn't. I didn't make that up. But he said civil disobedience uh, to force change in Idaho. Bundy is willing to pay the price for his actions. Most of us talk a good game. How many of us are ready to be arrested for our beliefs? Agree with them or not, Mr. Bundy walks the walk. So, a as I played that last one of C.S. Lewis there, there are three types of men. I want to understand who Ammon Bundy is, and uh, as the author that I'll reference in the future here on her book, uh, uh, American Zion, uh, I've not got all the way through it, but uh, she is setting up, uh, it is more of a setup for a takedown, but I, I think she finds some redemption uh, a little later on in one of her posts, and I'll be coming to that. Um, so... There's a lot of links in here. Find it in uh, in my uh, blog. Let's see what I can get back here too. I really need to kill tabs. Uh, here also, this one I do want to play. I think seven minutes of, uh, and it is from Montana Radio. Uh, I'm sorry, Montana Gazette Radio Live. It's uh, activist uh, and patriot Ammon Bunny. I think it starts about seven minutes in. So I'm going to open that up. Let me get it uh, uh, all going here, and then I'll have to fast forward it some. And then I, I will mute up. Um, like I said, I think this is going to be long today. Uh, I've got a lot to cover here and a lot of audio to include. I think it's very important that uh, this be uh, maintained in archives uh, elsewhere. The uh, I. YouTube video of M. Bundy. They're, they'll probably strike them down one of these days, as they've done done them in the uh, in other places. Let me push play and get it to wind up a little bit, and fast forward to about where I think I remember it to be about seven minutes in. Liberty News taking the lock on the shackles of tyranny. Machines are going arrested him for failure to appear. This is oh a couple almost three weeks ago, probably about three weeks ago yeah. now. Uh, give us a, give us a lowdown on that, on just the latest, just the latest example of tyranny perpetrated against you and your fine family. And folks, if you knew the Bundys, if you knew, I mean, I've met his whole family pr pretty much, I think, uh, in, and they're all great, great patriots, and you know, people that you'd want to have over for dinner and and hang out with. And I mean, they're just Americana all the way, and they're just being, I mean, they're just really, it's coming to a point where you're just being. I mean, it's almost like they're stalking you or something, Ammon. It's almost like they're they're just like, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, it's it's they just won't leave you alone. I mean, it's 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 out, it's out of control. Well, yeah, I mean, they are because they're you know targeting us uh, because we won't stop exposing what they're doing, and you know Idaho here is a good old boy state, and you know what you get when you get a bunch of good old boys. And they're just as corrupt as any other state, and in some ways even worse, even though people believe otherwise, uh, because of that good old boy mentality, you know, where, you know, we, we make a plan and we all, you know, stick with it, right or wrong, and we'll protect you right or wrong, and, and we'll make sure the power and money is distributed, you know, among our good friends, and that's a good old boy um, uh, state that we got here in Idaho. Well, um this COVID thing has given them terrible opportunity to, you know, get billions and billions of dollars of federal <coughs> funding and also to use the Idaho laws inappropriately to get complete control of the Idaho government and put it under the, the, the governor's power. And they've done that. And then they've just been literally spreading the, the wealth among their friends um, here in Idaho, and, and I've been extremely vocal about it because they've done it at the expense of Idaho. And uh, they haven't been very happy with me, and so they've done a done a pretty good do job at targeting me. 
um, especially, you know, when I went to the legislative session in, in August, special legislative session, where, again, they were trying to do a bunch of dirty business. And I exposed them and have been, and I brought a lot of people uh, to understand what's really going on. And so they targeted me uh, at the Idaho State Capitol, and they conspired to remove me uh, from the Capitol building uh, because they viewed, viewed me as an opposing political leader and believed that I would prove uh, to be a deterrent to their political objectives. And so that's when it started, and they trespassed me from the Capitol building uh, for doing nothing but being peaceful and uh, exercising my rights fully uh, and peacefully the way I you know, believe I have every right to do. And they trespassed me from the Capitol building and arrested me um, on August 25th, and then I went back to the Capitol building uh, to, to participate in the Senate proceedings, and they arrested me again the next day and charged me again with trespassing. And so I've been fighting these two trespassing cases. And, they, you know, and I spent some terrible nights uh, and days at the, in the jail um, in what they call a cold box. Uh, that was not a lot of fun. And, and um, anyway, so I've been fighting those, those charges and I've been litigating it like it's a federal case, <laughs> even though they're, or, you know, misdemeanor trespassing charges because I felt like it's such an uh, um, infringement upon rights, not just my own. And so that's why I went to the uh, courthouse on March 15th because I was finally, after seven months, I was finally able to get to, to get to trial. I've been demanding a, a jury trial ever since August that the Idaho Supreme Court suspended jury trial. <clears throat> in Idaho, suspended them. So I finally uh, get a <coughs> trial date for the courthouse to participate <coughs> in my trial, and they say I have to wear a mask. Well, I don't wear a mask. I, don't, I, I believe I would offend God if I was to wear a mask after what I know and the reasoning for the mask. So I, I declined, and I told them no, but I made it very clear that the Idaho laws state that the courts are to be open to the people, that they're not to be, the, the, the doors are not to be obstructed. It actually even says that. <coughs> uh, and that they are to allow me in to participate in my own trial. And they wouldn't. And so the, the judge and the prosecutor continued on in the proceedings and ultimately had ex parte meetings. Uh, while we were out trying to get into the building, and then he issued, the judge issued a failure to appear and sent about a dozen officers out to arrest me and Aaron uh, and drug us into the courtroom without mask and, and then down to the basement and then eventually took us to the 80 County Jail where we spent over 35 hours, well, right around 35 hours in, in the cold box again. And... Um, that's been our uh, experience for oh, this man. <laughs> I don't know. I was all of it's been I, mostly at the excuse of COVID. Well, we're joined, as you can see, uh, Ammon, thanks so much for that. We're joined by uh, Jordan Hall, who's the publisher well, of the Knox, a uh, recent guest on the broadcast, <laughs> certainly uh, an activist in his own right, in his own uh, uh, his field of, uh, of expertise. He's a pastor there out there in Sydney and has done some great work. Uh, well, doggum. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stop there. The rest of that is included. There's more stuff on down the line from Ammon, but we're sitting in the backstory of uh, what's going on today. Uh, is, it, is it a showdown? Is it a standoff? Um, I don't know. Here's, uh, I believe this is the one, a little short clip here. Um, I should remember to mute up during dabs. <laughs> it's medicine, okay? Coming around. Thanks for letting me know that, uh, Frumpy. I appreciate that. No, this is 39. Stop. Three kinds of men. Yes, we heard that one. Let me go back over to the uh, to the log page here. Uh, that was uh, Montana Gazette Radio Live, activist and patriot. Uh, here we go from Re uh, Rebecca Boone. Um, I like her style of writing. From, uh, uh, let me open it here. 
she's taken out of taken out any of her uh, uh, personal infliction, I believe, in in this. So kudos there. We've got a couple of good shout outs for some mainstream today. Anti-government activist uh, Ammon Bundy was arrested twice in two hours Thursday on suspicion of trespassing at the uh, 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 Idaho State House. Police said he returned to the Capitol building shortly after bailing out of jail on the first arrest. It wasn't immediately known why Bundy was at the State House. It marked the fourth and fifth times the man known for leading a 2016 armed standoff at an Oregon wildlife refuge has been arrested in Boise since August. Uh, with all but one, when he was trying to get into his trial, he went and wear a mask. Bundy has been uh, banned from the uh, government building, and I think actually that that uh, trespass was only like from uh, a certain area. I'm not sure. Uh, that's some uh, some part of the, uh, I guess, litigation. Uh, Bundy has been banned from the government building since August after he and dozens of others, uh, many of them members of his people's rights organization staged a series of protests at the state house over uh, coronavirus related measures in uh, one of uh, the protest angry <laughs> protest angry unmasked protesters forced their way into a house gallery with a limited with limited seating uh, shattered a glass door in the process the next day more than 100 protesters shouted down and forced from the room, lawmakers on a committee considering a bill to shield uh, businesses and uh, government agencies from coronavirus-related liability. Bundy was arrested for trespassing when he wouldn't leave the room. This was uh, this is the uh, beginning of the swivel disobedience. Uh, he sat in a swivel chair up there at the uh, where press was, and they was trying to say, "Hey, you don't have an official press pass. Uh, make your own badge." Big cardboard sign works for me. Bundy was arrested for trespassing when he wouldn't leave the room and, and uh, banned from the building for a year. He was arrested and charged with trespassing again the following day when he returned uh, despite the ban. <clears throat> uh, prosecutors eventually dropped some of the charges related to the August incident and the remaining trespassing charge is still moving forward in the court with Bundy representing himself. He has pled not guilty to the charge, telling the court he doesn't believe his actions were illegal. Last month, Bundy was ar arrested on a bench warrant for failing to appear. That's when he was trying to get in the courtroom, right? Uh, so you can go on with this story here, uh, find the rest of that. Uh, let me shut that off and go to the next one. Um, this is, uh, let me open it, uh, another story on his arrest. From the Oregon Life dot crime dot com crime anti government activist, <clears throat> but they keep calling them anti government activists, but it's not really the way it works. So uh, as we come to the uh, American Zion here, <laughs> sometime it might be a while. Um, we're gonna see that uh, picture painted that uh, among the sacred documents of. Uh, uh, Latter-day Saints that they they hold the U.S. Constitution as uh, divinely inspired, uh, as well as uh, the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the uh, Pearl of Great Price, uh, Doctrines and Covenants, uh, and probably some other stuff there. And also it gives question to which is not officially sanctioned, but the uh, White Horse Prophecy, which uh, again is coming up in their broadcast. <clears throat> this comes from the Associated. Uh, press uh, and there's a picture of Ahmed Bundy on the January 11th 2016 during the occupation of the National uh, Wildlife Refuge. Man, I'm kind of embarrassed here. Yeah, I've got congestion. Man, sharing my bodily functions. Dang, God, that's terrible. Um, the Associated Press. I, I wonder if this isn't from uh, Dog God. Oh, his name slips me, but he doesn't get his name published a lot of it. Always says the Associated Press, but he does a lot of uh, Ken. Uh, what's his name? Maybe I'll come to me. He, he gets a without his name, just the Associated Press. So they got like super writers, and he was at the Bundy trial in, in Vegas. I had some I wrote about him. Uh, so in Boise, boy oh boy, 
Anti-government activist Ammon Bundy was arrested again Thursday on a misdemeanor charge, trespassing. The fourth time uh, for the man known for leading the 2016 armed standoff at the Oregon Wildlife Refuge of uh, Malheur. <clears throat> yeah, so the first arrest, of course, was uh, last August, which uh, the, began the swivel disobedience. Um, uh, you know, I looked and looked, and I've not found anything uh, from media as yet this morning on his uh, his arrest right now. Let me back up into some videos here from Emma and Bundy. Uh, I want to get those into the, to the record. Um, he set up a house, and a lot of people are showing up. So that's why I say, is it a uh, is it a uh, a showdown, a standoff? Uh, I'm going to see how this plays out, and uh, it may not come out well. Um, almost kind of like a uh, uh, Edna Lane Brown situation here. And how far is the state willing to go in in uh, serving this warrant? Uh, if people there are standing in the gap, so and how will uh, Ammon respond? I would say peacefully. Um, that's my expectations. <clears throat> Not cooperative. Uh, Bundy arrested in uh, uh, twice in two hours. This is uh, an update. Uh, the previous and the update from Jacob Scholl. Um, I'll skip that. That's in the blog here to. Uh, for the record, here's a uh, Ammon Bundy arrested twice in one day for trespassing. That this guy again from Tracy Connor, and uh, joining forces we have far right reinforcement swarms house for Ammon Bundy uh, strong forces. Let's open this up. Uh, I believe this is a video here. It is from the Daily Beast. Uh, far right. Um, a lot of labels going on here. There's the picture and the cops. This, so this isn't the video. I think the next one. But Joey Gibson was there. Says he was uh, struggling to find a parking place for his uh, flag festoon pickup. <laughs> What's a festoon? <laughs> the residential Boise, Idaho neighborhood was already crowded with people and vehicles, including a large mo motorhome with a magna. Maga Masta sign. Uh, she parked right in front of my driveway. A resident shouted about the motorhome. It's not okay. Yeah, you don't block nobody's driveway. All right. There's more on that. Uh, let's back up. Close out for me. Please. Thank you very much. And here's a video. Uh, Ammon Bundy arrested twice at the state capitol. I think this might be a small one. Oh, we're coming up to American Zion. Let me move this for a second. I got the yucks. Oh, I got some kabucha. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Local anti-government demonstrator and political activist Ammon Bundy arrested twice today. Within a matter of hours at the Idaho Capitol building, Bundy was taken in custody on misdemeanor trespassing charges by state police. A video taken by Emily Walton shows Bundy being placed into a patrol car, and after posting a $300 bond, he later returned to the state house where he was taken back into custody on a second trespassing charge. The arrests are the latest in a series of brushes with the law for Bundy. He was issued a no trespassing notice after ISP, re after he refused to leave a committee room inside the Capitol building after a hearing ended last summer. Okay. I'm over here scrolling in the notifications here. Um, <laughs> been a long time scrolling. Coming down to uh, who posted that there, and then I want to go down to the American Zion and some links to that. 
and then I think I'll back up and get that video audio and include it anyways. Man, this is such a long scroll. Long, long. Here's Betsy Gaines, Quammen. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I think maybe I'll come back over there to uh, that. It's, it's nothing anyways. It's just me re retweeted it. And uh, the gal there, she's all that did the uh, uh, video. She's like, Oh, I heckled them and uh, uh, shut your face and get in. I said, shut your, she said, shut your face. Uh, I said, that kind of flies in the whole purpose that uh, Ammon's standing for. You know, and the one gal says, what do you mean by that? Uh, I say, uh, you know, being muzzled, he's, he's not going to be silenced or, or masked. I sent my buddy back in from us. Yeah, they made it back from the buggy ride. They just went a couple of nights camping out near Cleveland, Arkansas, in the National Forest area over there. All right, so, oh, wait a minute. I scroll past. Let me go back to uh, Betsy uh, Gaines Quammen. Uh Her book, <coughs> American Zion. Whoops, that's not... Uh, Click the wrong one. Oh, that's pretty cool, though. I have to go back and check that out. I've seen some dinosaur prints. Um, there's a lot here on Twitter, and she followed me. Hey, that's cool. Sure did. Yeah. Oh, last so last week was uh, Jerky Boy, a piggy and a poke, Pete Santilli, and the, there was a a man uh, series, Friends of Fools Play. Up on bit shoot. Thanks, Grimmer. Thanks, bit shoot. Um, this is a long lot of pushing buttons here. I had all this stuff open, then it like cycles out and closed out. Then I gotta go all the way through here. Let's see if I can get there from here. I wrote a book about this issue if you're interested in it. Um, <clears throat> Let's click. Can I get there? I think I might be able to get all the thread out of this, hopefully, here from this. Yes. So, yes, Betsy, uh, she responded to me. I wrote a book about the issue. If you're interested in more, it's called American Zion. And I've got the book, and I've uh, I've got part through, uh, part way through it. <laughs> we'll come back to that. But this article here, we'll go back to that one. I found your article, I say, to be clear and concise. And I'd like to see more background in the cause of their dissonance, specifically the environmental assertion of harm to the tortoise by cattle and uh, reason for rescinding uh, grazing rights. This is, uh, so she was accused of, of running a hit piece here. And her book, yeah, it kind of is uh, so far, just set up for the takedown. But Liberty uh, uh, Dank Meme says, I can smell the bias in this article. It's not journalism for sure. It's called a hit piece. Hit piece, uh, uh, Betsy says, I was so careful. This is about Ammon's understanding. <clears throat> Which, in, to, in all fairness, that's what her book is doing. It's trying to set up uh, his belief and background. But uh, it is bias. Uh, in its uh, pretense. For example, uh, uh, one part in it, she's saying uh, Brigham Young, not Brigham Young, uh, Joseph Smith um, tells somebody if they don't pay for the printing and the first printing of the Book of Mormon, then God will smite them, something like, something like that. And then she goes on to say, of course it wasn't God saying that, it was uh, uh, Joseph Smith. But, I mean, that goes back to uh, I was going to put that in here, yes, when I spoke earlier about <laughs> being so dumb and obvious. Being my brother-in-law, he's married to my sister. That's what makes him my brother-in-law. <laughs> you got to talk to the dumb hillbilly or, or just the general public. I'm not sure. But to be fair, uh, some people don't know what to believe, and they need to be told what to believe. <laughs> Here's the article. uh 
from HistoryNewsNetwork.org article slash 1797-26, Ammon Bundy's Ongoing Religious War <clears throat> by Betsy Games Quammen. She has, holds a Ph.D. and is an author of American Zion. Uh, Clive and Bundy, God and Public Lands in the West. Here's a, a picture with uh, Ammon Bundy's arrest for failure to appear and was triggered by his refusal to wear a mask in the courtroom. Still from Ammon Bundy, uh, it's a steal from Ammon Bundy's YouTube channel. <clears throat> uh, well, here's a little bias, but you know it's okay because we're all biased and. <clears throat> I think it's only fair to <laughs> let your light shine. Just let everybody know what you're thinking. That's outright. Ammon Bundy, right-wing malcontent behind the 2016 armed takeover of Oregon's Malheur Wildlife Refuge, and now a Western anti-mask movement and believes he's doing God's work. <clears throat> I, I believe that's fair assertion. He does believe that he's doing God's work. That's where I was uh, going with C.S. Lewis and, and setting up the setup for who is Ammon Bundy. Uh, you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. So, uh, for somebody to stand up with such conviction, okay, understand where he comes from, but where you come from is not where you're at. Well, he comes from a long line of uh, religiously inspired men who have been called to defend the U.S. Constitution. And, uh, in fairness, as I spoke earlier, that, uh, the LDS does consider that uh, to be divinely inspired. It's worthy if it was uh, worth what it was meant to in uh, holding the bounds of government, not being used as a weapon against the people, because that's not what it was intended to, to be for. Bundy has uh, varied his, in his focus from rebelling against public land ranching regulations to protesting COVID-19 safety protocols. But in his views, in his views, these are all forms of government tyranny and affronts to constitutional rights. Uh, arrested for the fourth time, uh, March the fifteenth, <clears throat> Bundy was taken into const, uh, custody for failure to appear at his hearing on uh, past trespassing charges. They wouldn't let him in uh, because he refused to wear a mask into the courtroom, thereby missing his trial. He was apprehended outside amid a throng of other protesters. Bundy's crusade has been a long time in the making, but in the last year he successfully established a coalition of supporters that is broad, diverse, and a serious threat to federal law. His group is called the People's Rights Network. Like the Oath Keeper and Proud Boys, it includes members who see the current government as a threat to perceived rights and are committed to, to defend their ideas of personal liberty by force if necessary. That's some uh, choice words there. Um, so backing up there where it says uh, uh, who see the current government as a threat. I find that interesting. Current? Is there, is there previous and will there be others? Or is it states of governance? <laughs> so therein lies the uh, uh, this uh, conflict of ideas. Boy, I have so much. I just don't know that I'll find it all to bring into this. This idea that that separates the the two ideas. And I know Chloe's listening from from the left perspective, and uh, uh, we'll have some people from the right perspective, and some down the middle, and others that. Uh, Maybe perhaps like myself, uh, I identify as an anarchist, but uh, that only exists in the mind because we exist with with government and the idea, and the same as Ammon, because, you know, I'm an anarchist, I'm not, that doesn't mean I'm anti-government, which, yeah, I get it, you say, ha ha, no such thing. Oxymoron, sovereign citizen, la di da di da but there is an ideology there that uh, we're wanting to present that has... Uh, government and and media, for that matter, that uh, that I take the stand on and bring an accountability. Um, I continue here with this. Uh, uh, so that so what has uh, taken Ammon Bundy so long, or, or what is what? Let me start again. What has taken Ammon Bundy 
who first uh, came to prominence during the 2014 armed standoff in Nevada over his father's unpaid grazing fees and trespassing cattle into a life of anti-government militant. Um, how did that come to that? Well, uh, this is the uh, seven-year anniversary of that standoff. It was an armed standoff by uh, federal agents. I know I was there. Uh, Mama Bear also has... Uh, made comment over here. She was a witness in the uh, trial up in Oregon. And see, there it goes spinning again. And i got to scroll it all the way back down to get it again by opening it. But uh, I met her in 2014. She went to Oregon. It was in the, uh, for the, as in a, as a FBI infor informant testified and kind of shot holes in her case. They a bunch of big fat liars. I know from what I see how the FBI works, they're uh, big fat liars. <laughs> uh, oh, Ryan English, I give him credit if he would have gone on and just told oh, the robber ship, uh, Robert Shapiro to uh, chill. Hi, there's Mama B. Bear. Uh, I'm home right now if you're listening. Um, we was a talk in here. Talk about, hey, Paul Bliss, Paul Bliss, uh, he's uh, giving me some reaction here to, let me close you out there, Mama Bear, I'll get back to you, close, thank you, yeah, met Paul out in Vegas during the trial, good post, he says, thank you very much, sir, I've got uh, a couple of interviews with him on my YouTube, there, well, actually, it's in the Bundy uh Standoff playlist at Real Liberty Media on the YouTube channel there. Uh, coming on down. Hey, there's a picture I posted. Room for one more? I predict water in the future. There's my buddy. He just got back from uh, a trip up North Horseshoe Bend Lake. And then he dropped over and see my other friends. I said uh, I just saw getting back on their buggy uh, over in Cleveland in the National Park over there. A uh, couple of kayaks on board. Here we go. <clears throat> This is on the uh, my post here on the United States versus Bundy. Uh, got a couple of comments from Mom and Bear here. So, she was uh, unsub number seventy five, and I believe I have this uh, from Gary Hunt. He had these are redacted files, uh, and I have it on WordPress. I should capture that and bring it over onto the blog so we got that um, and Ron Miller is uh, uh, as yet unpublished book on the, the, all of this has uh, uh, included Mama Bear in his book that's a little bit more uh, uh, Mama Bear asked should, uh, shouldn't he talk to her if, you know and I said yeah I can introduce y'all and but anyway, seriously, she says, uh, uh, as unsub number 75, seriously, over a, a pink six-shooter, LOL, darn Cessna. Uh, by the way, those little spy planes were declared unconstitutional after the Oregon standoff. Nothing to do with it, though. But that doesn't mean those drones are declared unconstitutional. The courts cannot keep up with the technology to help us with our rights. I agree. Um yeah, it's it's lost an amazing shuffle. So here she asked me, why did I go there? Uh, and she left shortly after seeing Ammon. Uh, there's more here. She she got there Thursday about 11 a.m. I got there Friday, and I go back in my memories on Facebook. There's a lot there, and I I went up and I spent. Uh, some weeks there and pop back and forth to uh, to Vegas and well, I was in my primitive days of technology <laughs> for sure had no internet connection out there I did uh, do some interviews by uh, call in radio here's uh, here's another video. this is from Casey Weiland he's out there in supporting him and Bundy and update uh, Josh Martinez, uh, he got uh, screwed, blue and tattooed. They come with a superseding indictment on him. 
and uh, they had a million dollar bond, knocked it down to a hundred thousand. They came up with the money through uh, fundraising. Uh, Roger Roots, John Lamb, uh, Kelly Stewart, and others that uh, got the money together. And then, so there they come with a superseding indictment, another gun charge, and uh, doubled that that bond. So, waiting to see how all that turns out. But, in uh, in memory of, of mainstream uh, media, I'll have to tell you, many a good argument is ruined by some fool who knows what he's talking about. That's a quote. You can look it up for who that thing. All right, so I've come through that. I think uh, I think I want to back down these tabs and just start closing them out here and backing up. Let me close that one. Uh, what's the next one? That's the vodcast. Close out. Okay, and this was from Betsy right there, uh, History Newsweek. There's more in that. As far as uh, his impetus has roots in the early church uh, after the... should check out her book. Um, it does uh, trace him back a long history of the Mormon church and his foundings and um, the divisiveness and splits in it and different people that, that uh, claimed uh, to be the head after Joseph Smith was murdered. Uh, it's an interesting article. There's very little bias in there. I think she did a good job of presenting the information. And that after um, um, that that book there, American Zion, that uh, it, it was a little bit more of a hit piece. Let's see. Let me close that. <clears throat> I sure ain't closing too many tabs. <laughs> Um, but I do appreciate the interaction with her for certain. Hey, look, she didn't come to our already, and I've got more to go. Uh, um, ba boom, boom. Yeah, she said it must have been interesting. I told her uh, that I was, uh, uh, I told her about her book. I see that. It looks to be very interesting. So I went ahead and got her book. I, I wish maybe I'd have got it in PDF or, uh, um, a hard copy. I got the audio, which I don't have the uh, opportunity to see a lot of the other stuff that would be available in print. And some of the uh, where she got some of this information at, because I've it's been some decades ago that uh, basically the I'd I'd say your your first look would be maybe Walt Doctor Walter Martin Kingdom of the Cults. They they covered. People like the Mormons, the Jehovah Witnesses, uh, Seventh Day Adventists. I think they took off their cult list. So basically, it's the claim that uh, of a cult status to um, to Mormonism. Here's what she says about her book. I say, yeah, I found it on, on audiobook. Look forward to listening. And I'm, oh, uh, I think 15 parts in on. Um, I don't remember how many, 30-something, so about a third, maybe. I don't know, somewhere in there, of the way through. So she says, thanks, I haven't heard it yet, but I heard the narrator mispronounces some terminology, which is super annoying, so sorry for that in advance. Cool. Appreciate the interaction, too. All right, let me close some tabs down. Backing out. New tab, close. Um... That's Bohemia Rhapsody. Close that. Notifications. Of course, it's going to spin it up and back up where I'd have to go all the way through again, which I'm not going to do. I think I'm going to go back over here to uh, get some of this audio going. Uh, and I'll go talk to y'all folks in the chat room and poke around. So as this comes up, I'm going to, let's see, let me make sure I've covered it all here. I do believe I have, yeah. Yeah, I come to the end there. So I'll go back to some uh, YouTube video, and we're going to get this audio in here. For Mammoth Bundy. All right, let's open them up and let them go. Uh, I think I want to kill these. Good, I can kill them now. There was one I was maybe going to keep open. All right, 
Uh, probably going to be, let's see, I an hour of video. Uh, found out that they, Audio. the court, have has issued a warrant for my arrest. And not sure exactly why. We're trying to figure that out. Um, but it was done under seal, and it, um, I think, has something to do with my, uh, or it must have something to do with, you know, the capital arrest um, and everything that's going on. State but capital, not the U.S. It is. I do have a warrant for my arrest um, in Ada County, and uh, we're trying to figure that out. Now, it has a zero bond or bell, so uh, probably thinking that the uh, that they're going to want to try to hang on to me, arrest me, and then hang on to me, change change the conditions, and then hang on to me. The interesting thing, the same day that the court issued uh, a warrant for my arrest, uh, which was Friday, the prosecutors also filed to change uh, our trial date. And as you know, uh, it's been difficult for me to uh, have trial because I showed up at the courthouse and they wouldn't let me into my own trial and then they arrested me for failure to appear. And I believe that these... This arrest is all related. I know I've never committed a crime. I haven't hurt anybody or done anything or stole anything from anybody. So I have to assume that this uh, arrest warrant is related to all this political stuff for me um, being at the Capitol building and them arresting me. Uh, never was I, again, I just have to state this because... I went to the Capitol building, was peaceful, I was not disruptive, I was not in any way causing trouble. I was, you know, not, I was acting well within my rights. It was during business hours. Um, you know, nothing out of the normal was I doing except asserting my rights peacefully at the Capitol building. And I was arrested in August uh, one day, I was arrested again the next day in the Senate gallery. Um, that case was dismissed because it has been proven that um, that they didn't have authority to arrest me that day. And uh, then I was arrested when I went to trial on March 15th. They would not let me in. I literally demanded at the court uh, at the courthouse. I was demanding at the door, courthouse door, that they let me into my trial. The guards would not let me in. Um, and then while I was standing out there, Aaron and I was standing out in front of the court, they issued a failure to appear to my own trial while I'm literally at the courthouse door. Uh, so then they arrested me then. Um, and, um, and then on Thursday, uh, I went to the Capitol again to work out some things. And they arrested me there. Uh, I asked them what authority, and I, you know, I did this in my last video, showed what, you know, happened there. I went back. They arrested me again. That would make it f number five. And then Friday, uh, they issued a warrant for my arrest, which I don't know exactly what for because it's under seal. Um, and that's where we're at. So uh, just complete feels like complete tyranny um my wrists are still sore from being arrested before and now they can't wait to get me in handcuffs again and drag me to and i again never have i ever harmed anybody never have i threatened anybody never have i you know done anything but act well within my rights uh, as a as a man that lives in idaho and uh these things happen. However, I've got some pretty neat things because my neighbors um, found out that there was a warrant for my arrest and they were concerned because of the way that Idaho State Police has been acting towards me. They were concerned that my family was in danger or whatever it might be. And so they decided to have a party at my house. 
and this has been an ongoing party uh, since Friday. Um, and, uh, well, yeah, since Friday. And it has been so much fun. And I'll tell you, I'll just kind of give you a little idea. I'm going to have to flip my phone around so you can see it. Oh, I guess I could flip it around here. But I got visitors here and here with Lisa and enjoying things and going down the stairway here. And I got people that have camped out at my house. And there's been just ongoing. It's been people, sometimes the whole, my whole uh, orchard has been full of cars. And other times there's, what's that? Huh? Uh, I do have some. Yeah, I'll get you some in just a sec. And uh, other times there's just been a few people, or a lot of people, sometimes a few, but it's been almost nonstop since Friday. And uh, they're just here enjoying each other and having a good time around the fire. And we had a little bit of a church service and more testimony today. And so that's what's going on. It's been awesome. And I couldn't be more grateful to the awesome neighbors that I have that really care and are uh, willing to, you know, be a true neighbor and really love uh, and be concerned for for myself and my family and just make sure that we're okay and that things are okay and hit the wrong button but hang on anyway i just want to give you an update and let you know what's happening and uh i'll uh keep you informed if need be and just wanted to let you know that they want to arrest me again uh they want to really silence those who are going to speak out against them and uh it's become a very political thing the courts are acting completely arbitrary. The judge is, Judge Manweiler. And um, that's where we're at. But I feel the Lord protecting us. I feel it's good. And I'm just grateful for you. Thank you. All right, that's uh, Ammon Bunny. So he's at home. He's got a warrant. He's got a lot of folks uh, coming. Basically like uh, in uh, Bunkerville in 2014 where... People came in and uh, made a, a hedge, so to speak. And that's kind of part of the white horse uh, prophecy uh, that uh, there will come a time where the Constitution is held by a thread. And uh, it would be them that come, the one on the white horse to come. And uh, there's would be a, like a... a a safe place in America that's going to defend all that that'll abound in riches and um, I like I said I have uh, I have interviewed Brand Thornton we talked about that I guess I should grab that and put it in the blog also here's uh, I so I did some searches uh, Facebook I, I do a search here for Ammon Bundy <clears throat> right at the top we got uh, Brian Hyde yeah, he's a great guy all right, just down through here from uh, AP News, uh, anti-government activist Bundy arrested at Idaho State House from April the 8th at KATU.com. Ammon Bundy booked on new trespassing charge. Troopers remove him with cart. Uh, an Oregon Live anti-government activist Ammon Bundy arrested third time at State Idaho State House uh, April 8th. Uh, here's from KTVB. Uh, Dot com. Ammon Bundy arrested twice at Idaho State Capitol. Ammon Bundy's Idaho Crusade. There's what I got the K-I-D-O talkradio.com link. Um, there's a, a pretty good interview there with him. Uh, I believe that. Wasn't that it? Okay. Anyways, here's uh, from the Daily Beast. Uh, April the 9th, Ammon Bundy arrested twice in one day for trespassing. Uh, KIVITV.com on the 8th of April, Ammon Bundy arrested twice for trespassing on Capitol grounds. Uh, more from uh, East Idaho News. Uh, the update uh, is arrested twice in two hours. 
for uh, violating order at Idaho Capitol. Uh, KTVB on April 8th. Idaho Press. KXLY.com April 8th. April 8th. Idaho Press. Idaho State Journal April the 8th. The Daily Beast April the 5th. This is the far right reinforcement swarm judge's uh, house for Ammon Bundy. March 16th from dnews.com, activist Ammon Bundy arresting, arrested after missing trial. Uh, News.yahoo, April the 8th, uh, non-cooperative, not cooperative, Bundy arrested twice in two hours. Um, here's where I got the Montana Gazette Radio Live, uh, activist and patriot uh, Ammon Bundy on blogtalkradio.com, April the 6th, that was a week ago. I believe, or six days ago. When was it? Today's the 12th. Yes, 12th and 6th. Um, April the 7th, conserve, uh, conservative American news, AmericanNews.com. Am and Benny rushes over to help fellow uh, patriot after unbelievable police arrest. These, are, uh, these aren't in there. You'll have to look these up for yourself. Uh, from rawstory.com, April the 5th, call him right-wing activists converge on home of Idaho judge overseeing Ammon Bundy anti-mask case report. Here's one. Uh, I actually have this open. I'm not going to play it, but you can find it yourself at BitChute, Corruption in the Courtroom and Torture in the Jail, Idaho, Ammon Bundy. I played part of it. I didn't get too far into that. Um, more from uh, uh, NorthIdahoNewsNow.com from the 8th of April, April 9th. Uh, EENews.net, Pandemic, Bundy arrested again and again at Idaho State House. Local 8 News, uh, GolfNews.network, IdahoPress.com, uh, ThinkPoll.ca, KZClip.com. IdahoPress.com, again, Idaho Press, Federal News Network, again, 660 City, uh, City News, uh, CrossroadsToday.com, KXLY, uh, what is this, Yak, Yak Tree News, Y-A-C-Y-A-K-T-R-I News.com, lots and lots of coverage, News 8000, uh, well and Tribune C A. Wow, there's a lot. K O A M News Now. <laughs> Post Future Media, Fury Media, Conservative Angle Channel Three Thousand, uh, Toronto dot City News, News World Times. Boy, the list keeps going on. I, oh, I made it to the end. A News dot X O O News dot com. That was just in Facebook, right? It's a big part of history. It's what's going on. Um, oh, that's going to open up to the bit shoot video. Let me go ahead and just tell you what it is. Uh, and then I'll close it out. Hey, I'm getting towards the end of tabs. And then I've got a couple more videos to include. Yes, Agenda 21 Truth on uh, bit shoot. Find that. April 3rd, 2021. The uh, Ammon Bundy denounces corruption. I might not corruption. be like really exciting. Uh, because Just for a minute. I think ultimately excitement runs out. And I think that we need to uh, put in ourselves our, our, the, the core and the principles of, of uh, what is right and what is wrong. And, and then if we do that, if we, if we understand the true principles, then that will motivate us to do... Um, what is right more than excitement, more than music, more than anything else, um, especially as it is confirmed by the Spirit of the Lord. So I look at, like, what is trans... I, I should copy that and include it then into the blog since uh, we played a little bit. From Agenda 21 Truth on BitChute, uh, April 4th, 2021, Fourth Amendment, at uploading this video... In two days, uh, bit shoot bugs. Yeah, Grimner said there was some stuff going on with bit shoot. 
Ammon Bundy denounces corruption in Idaho. Corruption in the courtroom, Idaho State Legislature, Sheriff Department, and Idaho State Police. Judge, uh, let me click more, uh, Man Manweller, uh, Scott Johnson, the undersheriff. Boy, the list goes on and on here. Definitely want to include this in the blog. I'll have to do that afterwards. We won't have time to be doing that right now. All right. Which one am I at? That was the first one. Here, this one, I think, is 15 minutes long here. Let, uh, let's get that opened up here. It's almost 420 somewhere. Yeah, well, it's 14 and 39 seconds. 14 minutes, 39 seconds. I have had here an interesting go. day. Had an interesting day. I, I uh, spinning around. I hope I wasn't on mute all that. Been time. arrested twice today. And spinning. Let me just hit a stop here, just so. I, well, let's see here. Howdy, folks. Hey, Doc. Are you tuned in? He had to go town. What's your problem, man? Come here. All right, let's see if he'll play now. And I'm either there we go. completely stupid and crazy, or we have a huge problem, because I know that it's not just Idaho. I know that it's all over, and uh, I don't want to, you know, drag this on too long, but basically, many of you know, in August, I got, went to a special legislative session at the Capitol building in Idaho, where the governor was trying to make himself immune from the COVID decisions and all the terrible things he's done to Idaho. Um, the governor's received, we know, of $8.1 billion. Um, he put the state of Idaho under martial law, under code 46601, which basically says that all the government of Idaho is under the governor. Um, and then he uh, did exactly what the federal government wanted him to do, and he's received $8.1 billion. And he has made a own, his own proclamation saying that he gets to spend that money at his pleasure. And if you don't believe me, Go to his order 2020-07, Governor Little of State of Idaho, order 2020-07, where he says that he's putting together this committee that serve at the pleasure of the governor, and the governor's office is going to spend all the coronavirus funds that they received from the federal government, which is $8.1 billion that we know of. Um, he suspended the rest of the Idaho uh, government, the legislature's, um, and he's basically running amok here in Idaho. And so in August, this was months ago, this was eight plus months ago, uh, he tried to pass a bill that would make himself immune from any of his COVID decisions. And we went and the governor and the speaker of the house targeted me and, uh, originally thought it was the pro temp as well in the Senate, but we've kind of realize with all the discovery and all the, the letters and emails and facts and stuff that we've got through discovery, we, we, we now know that it was the Speaker of the House and the Governor. And uh, they targeted me and had me arrested in August twice and trespassed me from the Capitol building. They did that so that I wouldn't, you know, influence the legislatures to end the, uh, the emergency orders and the martial law that the governor has put the state of Idaho in so that so that he can continue to receive billions of dollars and have the governor gov government under his control and um, that's what this is all about so you know then I began to fight my case uh, many of you know they denied us a uh, trial for months and months and months clear from August 2020 to March 15th of 2021, they wouldn't give us a trial because they said the trial, jury trials have been suspended in Idaho. Imagine that. Jury trials have been suspended in Idaho. Then, because we kept pushing and insisting that we get a trial, finally, seven months later, 
they give us uh, actually more than that. But yeah, I know about seven months later, they give us a trial date on March 15th. And we go to show up at the trial and they arrest us for not coming in without a mask. We were down there. They wouldn't let us in. And they they give a warrant for failure to appear for me and myself and Aaron, one other guy who's going through this with me. So we go to the courthouse. We try to get in. They will not let us in. They block us from coming in. And then they file a, a warrant for our arrest for failure to appear to our own trial. So anyway, that happened. Uh we also have been, you know, fighting and litigating, and we found that there was a bunch of corruption in what happened when they arrested me, of course. And we found clearly that the director of administration uh, didn't have authority. Uh, he was acting basically as a pawn for the governor. Uh, but he didn't have authority to uh, trespass us in the Senate gallery. So to make a long story short, we exposed that, uncovered it, we filed a motion, and we had that charge dismissed. So now I only had one charge, one trespassing charge. Well, so then today, I had a meeting over there by the Capitol building, and I thought, well, I now that that trespassing charge has been dismissed, and that was the only uh, written authority that they claimed, and also we knew that Bedke, the House Speaker of the House, didn't have authority, so I'm going to go into the Capitol building and I'm going to find out what authority they have, like, and I'm going to test it. So I went in there and ultimately the ISP surrounded me and I asked them, you know, by what authority are you doing this? And they couldn't answer me. They wouldn't answer me. And they arrested, they put handcuffs on me and arrested me, drug me out of the Capitol building, took me down to Ada, Ada County the entire time. I'm asking, you need to show me authority. You don't have proper authority. You need to show me the authority in which you are trespassing me for. And they wouldn't and couldn't. So then I sat in the cop car at the jail in the in the little Sally Port area. I sat in there quite a while, and I could tell that they were doing something going back and forth. And then on their computer in, in the front seat, I noticed that the uh, the administrator, the director of, of administration, which is Keith Reynolds, I noticed that a, the letter that he trespassed us with showed up or popped up on the screen. And then I, I kept, so then when they came, I asked them, well, what authority? And they said, the authority under the director of administration, that's what we're arresting you for. Well, that case had been dismissed. That is the very case that didn't dismiss because of you know, they didn't have authority in the first place and the court had to, or the prosecutors had to recognize that and they dismissed the case. And so he's telling me that he's getting authority to arrest me now. This is what the ISP officers, they're getting authority to arrest me now uh, because of a case that's been dismissed. And so, you know, I, I was like, wait a minute, that, that isn't right. So they booked me and did all the things and I bailed out got a ride, went right back to the Capitol building and sat there. I went up on the um, Senate side and sat in the Senate, right by the Senate entrances, just sat there. And uh, here comes um, Idaho State Police Blake Higley, who is the governor's personal security uh, sergeant. Uh, I don't, you know, and he comes over there and... Uh, he basically says, round two, huh? And I said, well, I don't know. I'm just wanting to know what authority you have to trespass me on. And he says, uh, uh, he couldn't give it to me. And then he went over and he started talking on the phone for a little while. And I'm just sitting there. And then he comes back over and he and I said, so did you, you find out what authority you're, uh, you're um, try, trying to trespass me, me on? Because he said, at this point, he said I was I was detained. And he says, I don't need authority. That's what he says. I don't have to have authority, I think was the exact word. I don't have to have authority. So you're just going to, like, trespass me, put me in handcuffs, drag me out of the Capitol building during a session. I want to, during a session and during normal business hours, it was fully open, you're going to drag me out of the Capitol building again in handcuffs for the second time in one day. And you never had authority and you couldn't quote authority. 
So then I said, well, does a person have a right to protest in the Capitol building? And he says, yeah. I said, so why are you arresting me? And then he says, well, we're arresting you for trespassing. And I said, well, what? Then who, by whose authority? Because it's very clear in Idaho law that you have to have the proper authority from either the, the Speaker of the House, the pro temp for the Senate, or the administration, depending on where you're at in the Capitol building. And so I'm asking, what authority? And he just said, he, he w- couldn't answer me. He wouldn't answer me. The only answer he gave me when it comes to authority is that he didn't need any. He didn't need any authority to arrest me. So anyhow, now I have been arrested five times now. Five times for simply trying to participate in a representative government. And, you know, I don't know what else to do. I can't even get to a jury. The Idaho Supreme Court now has has suspended jury trials again the, the very next business day after I tried to get into the courtroom. They suspended jury trials again. I mean, imagine that. That's a constituted, constitutional protected right. The right of the people to have a jury, a fair and public jury, a, a speedy and public jury. Now we're looking at eight plus months I've still never been given a jury, and I, I'm not going to ever get one. Really, it looks like that. And then when they set a date and I go to participate, they say that I have to comply to a mask and other things, which I, I can't morally do. And so we're in trouble. And I know that Idaho is not the same. The, the Idaho is not the only place doing this. Idaho is not the only state. In fact, that where the governor put the people of the state in a martial law situation. I mean, I want you to look up Idaho 46601, the code. It is a martial law code. And it's every, it, that code is the one that the governor has used to give authority to every one of his proclamations. And in that authority, or in that code, if you keep reading down, it'll say that the, that the, all the government is under the governor including the policing of powers of the state. It's complete dictatorship. It's complete dictatorship. And the, the, the thing about Idaho law, it, is, it only says that the governor can do certain things under martial, martial law, and it only says that he can hold it for 30 days and then another 30 days if, not, if, 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 he, if necessary. It doesn't say it can be indefinite. Now we've been in this martial law for almost four, uh, 13 months. Uh, actually, we're going, we're on close almost to, to uh, 14 months. We're going on 14 months. We've been in martial law here in Idaho because of COVID. COVID, right? So anyhow, I just wanted to express my frustration because these are serious things. And I'm either so crazy that I've lost it, completely lost it. That I would go down and challenge these things and get arrested over and over and, and act like I, could, I should be able to have a jury trial, act like I should be able to have, you know, a fair shot at trying to defend myself against these criminals. Either I'm completely crazy or we've got a really, really big problem. And, you know, I've been trying to do my best at warning people and showing people and exposing people what this COVID is all about. It is about force. It is about taking the rights of the people away, you and I. It is about, they use it for everything, excuse for everything. Excuse not to have a jury trial. Excuse to not to have hearings. Excuse to just completely trample on the rights of the people. Excuse to arrest you here and arrest you there. Excuse to destroy the liberties of the people of an entire state and then try to get immunity at at a special legislative session. And then an excuse to arrest people that show up peacefully, peacefully show up. And just try to make a difference. So, anyway, I'm either absolutely insane and uh, lost my mind, um, or we've got a big problem. And, uh, you know, the people need to make a decision on what that is, because I'm getting tired. I, you know, I'm about ready to say the hell with, with hell with everybody. Literally, the hell with everybody. I'm tired of going to jail and standing up, you know, and, and, and I'm grateful for the small amount of people that have stood up with me. But why can't people see the danger of what's happening? 
I wish I would have never, ever read a history book or the Constitution. That's how I feel sometimes. Because then I could feel like, oh, there's no problem, you know. I'll just, I'll just do, I'll just put on a mask. I'll just comply. There's no problem here. But no, these are serious things that have happened before over and over. These are not the beginnings. We're in the middle. The middle to the, to the coming up to the end of the, of basically when people lose completely pow, complete power over themselves and over their freedom. Dire warning. And people just don't seem to care. I'm, I'm not trying to be pessimistic or, or a downer, but we have to wake up. We have to wake up. I mean, I, I don't want to live in a dictatorship any longer. I don't want to pass this on to my children. So, anyway. Mm-hmm. You make the, you, you get to decide, I guess. Either you I'm insane decide. or we've got a big problem. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll probably touch uh, on some of that over here. I covered the Facebook uh, search for M and Bundy and here on the uh the Twitter search right there at top which uh which one was that I shared earlier that that uh, video of Ammon being uh, arrested in my response there of uh shut your face uh from Emily Walton mask wear it's her video <clears throat> I'm going to scroll down through here some of these I've liked and other uh I haven't but I think some maybe uh Need some comment. Here's from T Pain. Jail every one of these far right terrorists, he says, uh, on a story from Raw Story. Uh, there I am. Ha, look, I came right on up in that. The Bundy Ranch, seven years later. We are now live and coming to the end here pretty soon of American Dissonance. Standoff or showdown. What was Ahmed Bundy saying there? He's getting tired of it, uh, about ready to say the hell with everybody. Um, what, what does he mean by that? It's. Some people might take that as uh, um, the showdown clause. No, I, I think that is is he's he's looking back at uh, all that he's given and sacrificed, and how little people are willing to get up and make the stand for themselves against the uh, government oppression. Is he anti-government? No, he's anti-corrupt government, and uh, always being called the extremist, uh, uh, armed standoff. You never saw him armed, uh, neither in in uh, in Oregon, nor in Nevada, in 2014. Um, Sky Reeve, I got a lot of information from him and in interaction on on the Twitter. Um, this was before he saw the video there on the YouTube channel. Sheep Tramp uh, comments. Oh, uh, of course, I haven't seen that. Going to have a look now. Says uh, uh, the sheriff from Zenda. Uh, Bundy has had folks assembled since his warrant was issued Friday. Looks. Uh, Look for this to last for months. Uh, it could, could it? I don't know. Could this be another Edna Lane Brown situation? No doubt he will have learned from uh, the Oregon standoff and will now, uh, says and will now, I think should have said not, travel outside his compound. It's always funny how they call that uh, uh, these places compounds. You know, somebody's home becomes a compound. Uh I guess with great caution. On the bright side, think of this occupation as his home arrest. Perhaps yes, says the stupid hurts. Uh, family and friends gathering with Am and Bundy, April 11th, 2021. That's on the YouTube channel. Uh, far right leader Am and Bundy has now been busted five times in the last nine months from the Daily Beast. Chaos News. Shout out to uh, Sherry. Uh, Roberts Wilson used to be uh, sloppy. He says sloppy. M and Bundy slurs new arrest warrant details as uh, camping standoff brews. So yes, he said he is having a party since uh, Friday. Yeah, there's uh, there's some guarded words there from Lab Spokane. Uh, am I seeing this correctly? M and Bundy is now now has a dedicated cart to wheel his worthless grifter ass out of the state house. That's referring to the Emily Walton video from Safety Pen Daily. says, uh, far right reinforcement swarm judge's house for Ammon Bundy via the Daily Beast. There he is, the Daily Beast. Uh, but how can you say this name? 
Hi, Jimmy Front and Sharon or Andy. I don't know. It's always a good day when Ammon Bundy gets arrested. It's funny how uh, people that are taking a stand and trying to present accountability to the government, if uh, if they're on one side or another, how people will shout them down, whether it be left or right. There's more Emily Walton. Boy, she is everywhere. Here's Ashley Miller. She's no longer uh, working in uh, the Idaho media, so she cares little or could care less. Could she? Probably not. The Oregonian, we uh, listed that one. Uh, Anti-government again called. Anti-government activists. Uh, that one for Maxine Bernstein. Hey, we miss you, Maxine. Uh, she really evolved in her reporting. Standoff or showdown. That's for me. Em and Bundy. Zenda. Just a reminder, there's no broad warrant out. To, uh, there's uh, no bond warrant out for Ammon Bundy as a result of violating earlier bond provisions with his arrest this week. In effect, he is on the lam. There's the warrant number issued on the 9th of this month. No bond. A screenshot of that. It goes on and on and on and on. And I want to do one more thing here, I believe, before I go to this last video. And see if there's any updated information. It's 20 till 2 o'clock on the uh, 12th of April, 2021. And as yet, I've uh, found, I've not found, yeah, let's click that one. I've not found anything from the mainstream on the current situation. And I don't have uh, anybody, I'm just wondering if I do have, know anybody up there that's uh, going to be reporting I would think maybe uh, Brand Thornton, maybe uh, Captain Carl would be heading that way. Uh, I know some other folks that ought to be up there. So as things develop, I'll have to come back. Look here, there's nothing here. Seven days, four days, four days. Uh, all these other links that I've already included. Yeah, there's nothing new here. Um, I, I did take a look around on Facebook and didn't find uh, anything else over there. So it's kind of all quiet on the Western Front right now. I'm going to come back over here to the uh, radio log. I've got one more video. It's a rather long one, but I think uh, important. Go ahead and get these uh, words included in the record um, from Ahmed Bundy. And this is again from his YouTube channel. Um, I've started part way in. I think I'll back it up as soon as it quits spinning. All right. So we're going to take this one out, and then I'll be back. I, I've got this outro I want to play from the Redneck Dennis, uh, our new show here at Rural Liberty Media. We'll Cut off. I'm not sure why. All right. Let I'm me pause to speculate. This so this is, uh, but, uh, pause. this is part two, he, and he'll... Uh, He'll cover again what he's talking about in part one. He lost his video, so of course he's going to explain that here. Uh, so I went backwards here from uh, first to last. This this is why going backwards here on, in the case of these videos from Ammon that I'm uh, sharing audio with. Uh, and as I say, it's uh, preservation of the record and all that uh, disclaimer, copyright infringement, and all that good stuff. Let's see if it'll play now. Cut off. I'm not All sure right. why. So I'll be back. Not going to speculate. But um, I was telling you about how <clears throat> uh, in the committee chair uh, committee hearing, excuse me, that the independent media was arrested by the Idaho State Police for sitting in the exact same place they were sitting before. And it was a big commotion. And, you know, I mean, there was 20 to 25 Idaho State Police officers that actually came in the committee hearing and arrested a woman and a man uh, that was independent media and uh, it was directed by the committee chairman uh, right before he uh, ordered them to leave. The uh, sergeant in arms whispered something into his ear. We don't really know what that was. Anyhow, so I saw this commotion. Um, I saw how, you know, what was happening was wrong and how the uh, it seemed to be instigated. I also saw ISP 
you know, it seemed like they were planning something about 35 minutes before the meeting since they were all there. At least, a, you know, similar amount of officers was there. Anyway, so then throughout this chaos, I stand up and I take my phone out and I start filming and I walk around pretty much the chaos and not getting in too much involved in it because there wasn't really any reason to. And I walked around and I went and sat in the press box where the independent, independent media was. And I just sat there and uh, didn't say a word, didn't do anything. And pretty soon they had arrested everybody and people were following them. And there was, they, weren't ups, they were upset with the Idaho State Police and there was a kind of a, you know, regular little upheaval going on there and people are not very happy about what they were doing to us at the Capitol building and I was sitting at the press box and some people kind of came around and talked to me for a little bit but eventually most of the room was cleared out and it was just you know a handful of people left and I'm still sitting there and um <clears throat> I knew that the Lincoln Auditorium is closed till 7 o'clock. Uh, however, sometime uh, before then, they had decided that they were going to close the Lincoln Auditorium at 5 o'clock. And so at 5.05, they come in and they uh, trespassed me and arrested me. And, you know, for basically sitting at the press box <clears throat> and not leaving room or whatever excuse they had I mean you know I know the Lincoln Auditorium is normally open till 7 p.m. so whatever excuse they they made it up and then they trespassed me and arrested me and so I was being peaceful non-disruptive I wasn't bothering anybody I was just sitting there quietly and I was doing it in basically you know, in the attitude of saying, look, you're not going to just take the right of the press away from the people. Uh, that's basically what you're not going to do. So anyhow, and I made them drag me out because I don't assist or resist, you know. So I made them drag me out and they drug me out. They put me on a chair and rolled me out um, uh, and charged me with trespassing and obstruction of justice because I wouldn't help them and resisting arrest. Anyway, because I wouldn't help them. And I spent, you know, actually not very much time. I spent several hours, but then someone bailed me out, which I really didn't want them to do, but they bailed me out, and I told them thank you. I walked a few miles down to the Albertsons, um, talked to some guy who had a cell phone in the parking lot, let me call my wife, and she come and got me and went home. And... I'm thinking, well, I, you know, that happened. I was kind of surprised that that happened, um, but it was obviously what was happening. The prior day when we went into the gallery, you know, the Idaho State Police and the Speaker of the House was, you know, kind of wanting to reassert their authority. They felt disrespected by us pushing our way into the, the House gallery and they wanted to reassert their authority and, and get us get back at us. And they thought that somehow I was the one that was instigating it. So then they, you know, had the opportunity to basically make an issue out of it with me. So, you know, I, I sleep in my own bed that night, wake up the next morning. And then now the Senate is in session. And I feel like I should go back and... You know, this time I had I didn't know even know what they were really like. They they were trespassing me. I knew that, but I didn't know like the details of it. Whatever. And evidently, the the trespass they trespassed with me with is says I can't be on the property for a year, which is something you know it's completely wrong when it comes to the Capitol building. You're supposed to be able to participate and do the things you need to do. But anyway, I went back. And I went and sat in the Senate gallery and uh, was there for a little bit. And uh, the Senate went to a session or to recess for a little bit. And here comes the Director of Administration, Keith Reynolds, Blake Higley, the ISP sergeant, and a handful of other officers and tried to hand me a paper, which I refused and said I had a legal right to be here and I had a, you know, lawful right to be here. And 
they said they didn't care and surrounded me and arrested me and drug me off and took me to jail again. And I spent, you know, the rest of that day, because it was like 10 o'clock in the morning, I spent the rest of that day, that night, and a part of the next day. And then um, belt, you know, uh, belled out and um, went home. And that was another set of trespassing charges, resisting arrest and obstructing justice. Literally, I never did anything disruptive, never did anything not, uh, you know, to, to try to stop the process at the Capitol building. I was just there c completely peaceful. And um, and I was just sitting there both times, not bothering anybody when they arrest me. So anyhow, uh, so now I've been litigating my case. You know, I've been uh, having a whole lot of fun over the last uh, seven months you know, litig litigating my case. And I've written like a, literally a book of motions. I've got like four of these three ring binders clear full of motions. And I've been fighting multiple attorneys. Like I've been fighting, for example, because I have all of these people that are, you know, from the state of Idaho, Idaho State Police, Sheriff's Office, um, Boise PD, all that were kind of part of this. So I've been trying to get them these witnesses in my trial. So I've been subpoenaing them and then they've been getting lawyers and trying to quash my subpoenas. And there's been this litigation going on. And one of these was that Idaho calculates their speedy trial where if you, you can't go to, well, it'd be a speedy trial violation if it's over 180 days since the time you were arrested. And that is a long time. That's six months, of course, but most states are like 60 or 70. Anyway, so I filed a motion that I wrote, and it was basically warning the judge. The title of it was a notice of foreseen speedy trial rights violation. And I informed the, the court that they had miscalculated the, treaty, the speedy trial calculation and that According to the correct calculations, February 24th was the day I was supposed to go to trial or before. And the state, the prosecutors, responded back, and this is an important thing for us to understand. And this is something that you and I need to be able to get our minds wrapped around because this is the way they think. So they responded back and said, okay, Basically, that we don't disagree with you in your calculations. So I got that right. I must have got it right or they would have certainly tried to object to that. So basically, we agree with you that you're supposed to have your trial on or before February 24th. However, the Idaho Supreme Court, because of COVID, has suspended jury trials indefinitely. So therefore... Uh, and they have said that, you know, that it, they're the ones that get to make that decision. And so this is their conclusion. And this is important. They said, therefore, the defendant, that's me, cannot demand something to which he has no right. Now, think about that. I'm demanding a right to a fair and speedy trial, which is protected by the Constitution, protected by the Idaho Constitution. And because of COVID, they said the Supreme Court says basically you don't have that right anymore. And so, and the, and the prosecutor is arguing, arguing that the defendant cannot demand something to which he has no right. And then they go on the state request the court to deny the defendant's peti petition to calculate his speedy trial date based on irrelevant and inapplicable law. The irrelevant and inapplicable law that they're talking about is the United States Constitution and the state of Idaho's Constitution because they're saying that the Supreme Court overrules that. And therefore, you and I, according to them, do not have a right. So therefore, we can't demand a right that doesn't belong to us. And this is the way these people think. It's very sick. And this is the danger that we're in. They don't believe that unless they or 
the bureaucratic head or the government uh, you know, official, unless they say it, they don't believe that we have rights. They believe that they created the right and have granted it to the people rather than God has created us and granted us rights and they only come from him or 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 not granted us he actually gave us rights god has made us agents unto ourselves he told us that we're agents unto ourselves basically he created us he gave us a conscience he gave us the the ability to think and to act for ourselves and then he says you are an agent unto yourself and if we choose we can give ourselves back to him and follow him and we do that through a contract through a covenant through baptism, where we promise him that we will follow him, that we'll remember him. And when we take the sacrament each week or whenever we get it, then we are actually renewing that covenant that we made to him. But it's us, as agents unto ourselves, contracting or covenanting with God to obey him as, as free agents. Or maybe we choose not to, as somebody, and we might follow follow Satan or follow a wicked path. But that's ours to do. God has given. Now, we'll have consequences for that. But that is ours to do. But what they're saying, what the prosecutors and the judge and all these people are saying, is that we're not agents unto ourselves. We are, they, they are the sovereign, and we are the subjects. And we only have rights because they granted them to us. And therefore, as they said in here, defendant, or me, or you, cannot demand something to which he has no right. So anyway, I could I could go through so many different things through this litigation that has been so revealing. And also, I will say, as far as the case goes, that, there, remember, there's two charges. Well, I was able to litigate and, uh, you know, show them how legally the second charge, when they arrested me, legally they were... Um, they were, uh, they did it unlawful. They did it illegally. And so I was able through the motions and through litigation show them how they did that. And the judge basically had to dismiss it, although he didn't want to. They, they had to because ultimately the, they didn't have the proper authority. And I actually believe that the second charge, you know, charge, trespass charge, is also going to be dismissed. But, of course, as you saw Monday... Um, I had trial, and so, like a good boy, I at 8.15 in the morning was when the trial was supposed to start. I show up a little before. I go to go into the courthouse, and they say I have to wear a mask. And I've told them multiple times. I've even litigated. I've told them that I, I don't wear a mask. And the reason I don't is because I don't feel it's right, and I actually feel strong enough about it my conscience is telling me not to wear a mask, that there's something wrong with it, that it's a symbol of control and a symbol of, of something that is very wrong uh, that is happening. And so I have felt that it's a, a direct, it would be a direct sin against my conscience uh, if I was to put on a mask, especially for political reasons. And, uh, I mean, I've wore a mask, you know, a mask for when I paint vehicles. I like to do that or I'm working on something in the shop course i still do that but there's no way i can put a mask on to you know go out in public to go to a building to do any of that stuff you know that's that's along with this covid stuff because it's it's a lie and it's deception and i know as a just man that i am not to participate in in deception i am not even to act in any form or fashion that i am deceiving somebody and I know better. I know what that mask is. I know what it means. And so, and I also know that I would offend God if I was to put on a mask. And so it's a very sacred thing to me, a very real thing to me that, that burns deep in my heart. And I, I, I can't explain why some people feel it and some people don't, but it burns in my heart that it, that I should not put on a mask, that I would, that I would uh, sin against my conscience that I would offend God, and therefore I can't. I can't. For those reasons alone. Um, so I show up at the courthouse, and they won't let me in. 
They physically are blocking the door. I physically tried to open the door, and they physically are blocking the doors with, with, with armed uh, officers. And they have the whole corridor inside with officers, and I can't get in. And there's, of course, people here coming to support, to, to witness the trial. I have jur- uh, uh, witnesses that are there, and none of us are allowed in. None of us. And so, you know, people kind of start making some noise and so forth, and the time goes on. And then it's probably now about, you know, say about 10 o'clock or a couple hours later, almost 10 o'clock. And we get word, because people are looking online and so forth, we get word that they just issued a warrant for my arrest and Aaron Schmidt's arrest, who was who's also, you know, on the case with me and also was arrested and very, very good man. And uh, they they said that they issued a warrant for our arrest for failure to appear, failure to appear to the trial when we're literally standing outside the courtroom trying to get in, and they won't let us in. Then they issue a warrant for our arrest with failure to appear. With remember, these are mis- this is a misdemeanor trespassing charge. One of the charges just got dropped, so we only have one left. And their misdemeanor trust it's a misdemeanor trespassing charge. And they now issue a warrant for our arrest for failure to appear with a ten thousand dollar bond. The the officers that actually even arrested us and booked us into the jail couldn't believe they'd never even heard of such a thing. A misdemeanor trespassing charge with a ten thousand dollar bond. And so anyway, basically what they did is they sent swarms of officers, the sheriffs, and C P D just came in and just like just started pushing people over. They knocked a woman over. They knocked a man over. He fell over, hit his head on the concrete. They took him off with, uh, took him uh, out of there in an ambulance. Um, just a bunch of thugs coming in, like literally a bunch of thugs. I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking. They have, they have no respect or decency. In fact, I, I kind of do know what they're thinking. And basically, they, they don't believe that the people and them are equal. They believe that they're higher than the people. They believe, and that's what causes them to be able to be so disrespectful to the people because they don't believe that they're equal. They believe that they're above them. And they've actually been trained that. And they've been trained that, you know, if anybody even touches you, you can you can file assault and put someone in prison for five, ten years. And they're literally, the laws are not equal. The laws protect them so that they can actually hurt people, steal things, abuse people, literally, uh, you know, uh, completely abuse and damage people, and the law protects them. And if the same thing ever happens to them by somebody else, then the law uh, really comes down on that person, and it's a it's a huge inequality. And as you know, all people are are supposed to be equal, and it doesn't matter just because you're an officer. If you not if you hurt somebody intentionally, or if you disrespect somebody or damage somebody's property, you're still going to be accountable to God. And you don't you don't get to just do those things and think, well, I'm an officer, because God don't care. God's going to put you there, equal to your fellow man, equal to your brother and sister, and say, okay, this is what you did, and this is what this is the accountability that you will receive from that, unless that person repents. And ask for uh, the Lord Jesus Christ to cover his sins. And that's just the way it is. That's the justice of God. All sins will be paid for. All wrongs will be made right. And it doesn't matter if you're an officer or if you work for the government. Uh, that's exactly what will happen. So anyhow, they come in, knocking people over, hurting people, throwing people to the ground. And then they arrest me. Uh, drag and then drag me into the courthouse. And again, remember, I don't walk for them. I don't use my energy to help them oppress me. So I make them drag me, and they do drag me. And the funny thing is, is just a few minutes before, I was trying to get in the courtroom without a mask, right? And they wouldn't let me in. And now they're trying to drag me into the courtroom without a mask um, and ultimately drag me in there. And, of course, then they load me in a vehicle, take me to the Ada County Jail, uh, try to book me in, but I don't talk to them, and I don't help them. So they throw me in a holding cell, and I sat there for 
I think 32, 35 hours, something like that. And, you know, I, I won't, I won't cry to you about how miserable it is in there, but, you know, I had actually layered up because I knew how cold it was. And they saw that I had layers on. So four or five of them, I, I don't look at them because I don't want to hate them. I don't want to hate anybody. So I don't really look at them. I just, you know, I don't look at them. So that if I see them on the street or something like that, I don't, I don't have animosity towards them. I don't want to live that way. But anyhow, uh, four or five of them came into the room, uh, literally body slammed me on the, on the concrete, stripped my clothes off and took all those layers, uh, left me in my, uh, garments, my under, my underwear and, um, including my socks and everything. They stripped everything. And, uh, and then, uh, after they left for a little while, then they threw my, uh, jeans back through the little hole in, in the door. And I was able to put, put them back on. But that's the situation I was in. So I was down to, you know, very little clothing, no no socks. And that room is literally like a meat locker. It is extremely cold. And there's no nothing. It's just concrete. And what happens is, is at first it's okay. But as things go on, and, you know, I felt like I, the Lord was strengthening me. I felt like I could endure as long as I needed to. But what happens is over time, your body temperature starts to drop and you get very, very cold. And your feet are extremely cold because it literally that cold concrete just starts to move right through you and it transfers heat, right? Or cold, it's cold, it transfers cold and takes the heat out of your body. And so your... Uh, you start to get so your feet so cold that you can't stay on the the concrete anymore. So then, and then you lay down, and then your body gets so cold that you can't lay there very long, probably about ten minutes, and you actually start to shiver. You can't lay down much longer, even if you move around. You can't lay down there much longer. So then you got to get up again, and then you don't have very long, even if you're pacing before your feet are so cold. And so it's this going back and forth. Back and forth. And then what the problem is, is you get sleep deprived too, because you can't sleep more than 10 minutes. You literally wake up, you're woken up because of the cold and your body is shivering. So then you get up, you pace around. And sometimes I could sit on the toilet, kind of pick up my feet a little bit and try to get a break that way. But that's not very comfortable and you can't sleep. So anyhow, that's the situation. I'm not crying to you about it, you know uh, it's it's completely wrong. It's designed that way. That's why they strip your clothes off you. That's why they take your uh, socks. It, it is a form of very uh, unusual uh, punishment, and um, and it is cruel. It is absolutely cruel. But that's what happens. And you know, so and every hour seems like you know three to five hours. It's you know it's a long time. Anyhow. So the next day, uh, that's what happened. So the next day now I'm into, you know, 24, 25 hours. And ultimately, oh, I part of the reason why I was in there is because they told me that in order to go through the booking process and to get to the, you know, the housing areas that I would have to wear a mask and that I would be strip searched. And so I wasn't going to go through that. And then... Uh, 24 hours later, they come in and say, well, well, we'll book you without a mask. And, uh, you know, I also had an arraignment, uh, which was ridiculous. And then the judge said, you know, he's going to hold the $10,000 bond. And he also said that, you know, I have to, uh, you know, my terms of release are that I um, uh, wear a mask and show up to the hearings and all that. And, of course, I didn't agree to that. And I, I will, I'll never wear a mask because I don't feel like I, I, you know, I don't, I can't. So, but that was his order. I never agreed to it. Um, he did order it. I didn't have to say anything uh, or I never would have. I'd probably still be in there. And once that got done, uh, they set another trial date for May 15th. And so I'm like, well, I don't want to sit in here for the next two and a half months or two months. Um, and so... I, uh, actually, yeah, actually it is two and a half months. And so anyway, I, um, 
So then I bonded out, and I and I Aaron, I made sure that Aaron was bonding out too, because I wasn't going to leave him in there alone. And so I bonded out, and uh, was a very cold, uh, icicle type person when I come out of there, but uh, made it. And my wife was there, and friends were there, and Aaron came out, and and that's that's the situation. But this is what's interesting because now. They have a date set for May 15th, and if the mask mandate at the courthouse is still in place, which, you know, who knows, they're, they're psychos, the masks mean nothing but tyranny, and of course, the courts like to be tyrannical, so they're probably going to keep it in place as long as they can, and um, so if they're in place, then May 15th, guess what happens? The exact same thing. I go to court, they won't let me in. They probably will put like a $50,000 bond on me then and uh, arrest me for failure to appear, even though I'm right there trying to get in. And so that's the cycle. And then th- then with the, they may not even let me out that time. They may force me to, you know, stay in jail. And then, you know, they'll probably transport me to trial and try to force me to put a handcuff or a, put a mask on. I won't. I'll take it off. And eventually they'll probably handcuff me behind my back and have officers there keeping the the mask on my face while I go through trial. Because <laughs> that's, that's the scenario, right? Um, but, uh, you know, I, it, it is what it is because we do it as right and we let the consequences follow. And I feel in my heart that that is that I should not put a mask on. And I believe that it is our duty Uh, to make sure that um, we do what we feel is right. I also believe, you know, as far as those that might be going, well, it's just a mask. It's not just a mask because every time you put a mask on, what you're doing is you 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 are telling somebody else, whoever made that mandate, whoever made those, uh, those forceful actions, you're telling them that they have a right to tell you what to do with your body. And that is extremely dangerous. When other people think that they have a right to control your body and you have given them that uh, b- belief or you have allowed them to, to have that belief, it is extremely, extremely dangerous. And ultimately is the cause of why, you know, 80 million people in the 20th century were killed by their own government. Um, 180 to 250 million, 180 million to 250 million people were murdered by their own government. And it started out very small each time. It was just a little thing that they would push. Uh, then, and the people would comply. And then they would do something else. They would push. People would comply. And it got worse and worse. And people would comply until it got to the point where they were actually taking lives in in mass numbers. And um, Oops, crap. I was trying to open the trap up over there, and I hit the close button. Um, let me go back and catch the rest of that. And that's for some reason. Ah. I'm going to have to hit it and stop because this is open into um, a time to kill. Somehow it's locked in my, when I click that there. I need to change that for the home. Let me get the uh, history up. Doggone it. A Time to Kill by John Grisham. Is there? Stop. Thank you. I used a little of that theme a week or two ago. Some of the pluckings from the paraphrase plagiarist. <laughs> Some people say, Peacock, come on, open for me. Be nice. Can't believe it did that to me. I was going to go get, uh, I don't even remember now. <laughs> or, oh, yes, I do. I was going to uh, Real Liberty Media. That's right. So let me just open that up in a separate tab and see do it uh, play where I left off sure enough it's going to as soon as it uh, 
get some circles done chasing itself around and around. Yeah. And yeah. It, that's okay. why you have to stop it at the beginning. Well, why'd you stop? For example, if you don't answer the question, and we haven't done a very good in this good in this country answering the question of why we shouldn't have or why we shouldn't wear a mask, or that we shouldn't wear a mask because we own our bodies, we haven't done a very good at answering that question. And because we haven't answered the mask question, now we're going to have to answer the shot question the vaccination question. And, you know, if we would have answered the mask question that, look, it's our, it's, it, the, our body belongs to us, nobody else. You can't tell us to wear a mask. You can't force us to put a man-made filter over our mouth. Because we didn't answer that affirmatively, now we got to answer whether they have a right to inject us with a needle and put something unknown and terrible into our bodies. So anyway, think about that. It's not just about a mask. And also, but mo most importantly, it's about your conscience. You, you need to do what is right no matter what. Do what is right, let the consequences follow. So just on a ha happy note, so you don't worry too much about, you know, it all happening again. And it might, it might very well. But I do believe that we'll prevail through the litigation process, through the motions. I do believe that, that God has given us an advantage. Um, and that we will have the case dismissed because the judge will be compelled. And so, anyway, that's the rest of the story. I'm kind of long-winded. Uh, just thank you for, uh, you know, keeping your eye on myself and my family. I will say that in that cell, it's very difficult, um, but I felt the Spirit of the Lord there. I remember kneeling down and, and you know, and um, and everything when you're in the, those situations, everything becomes, you know, all you the perspective becomes very clear and the most important things become very clear as the most important things. And of course, the most important thing in my life is my relationship with with God and my relationship with my wife, and then my relationship with my with my children. And, um, you know, I want to be a good father. I want to be a good husband. And I want to be a good son. And, uh, and I'm grateful for the experiences that, you know, I get to have by, by doing what is right, even if they're difficult. And so I leave this with you to, for you to judge. If you felt like what I did was right, there's plenty of video on it, I think. I don't really have it captured. There's tons of video that shows what happened at the courthouse and how the officers treated the people and, you know, all of that. Uh, so I would recommend, if you are still interested, to go find that. Um, uh, go to, like, Lori Marr's web, web or uh, Facebook or uh, Alicia Peterson's Facebook, I think she's got it. Others will have it too. Brian Bowermaster, he he probably captured a lot of it. Um, I you know those are some names that you could go to their Facebook pages, and um, and uh, see what happened there by video. And so thank you for your time, and uh, I'll keep you posted. Thanks, Amen. I don't know how to stop this thing. <laughs> Got the same problem I do. Jane, get me off this crazy thing. <laughs> in modern times, wonderful. I mean, looking back, <laughs> that's a nice smile, Amen. Thanks. I got the, I got the great pleasure and honor of knowing Amen. Uh, conversation he and I had, along with Jason Patrick, in 2014, before the standoff, that Fed-led standoff, and quiet little community of Riverside, Nevada, along the Virgin River, along the valley there. Uh, I was a, a youngster in them parts and a teenager, and we went to school in Moapa Valley in eighth grade. We played football against Mesquite. Them some tough old boys up there, I'm going to tell you for sure. 
So I was in Vegas in 2014 when all this stand came about, and uh, there I went. Uh, I've been doing internet radio for a year over at UCY, talking about things that, uh, what matters, um, what matters worldwide, and, and America is really the, the leading force in this world, so uh, what happens here doesn't stay here, uh, right? This is a description over here about at Real Liberty Media. And uh, I added to and taken from to put it all together. Thanks, uh, Grimner, for the, this description coming up in part. Uh, I start out by saying that history is hard to know because of the paid propagandists. Maybe they just want to be in control of the way the story ends. MSM floating about in a world of clap. They try to sell it as mainstream. It is anything but that. It is not media, as the word is used in modern thought. It is propaganda. Real Liberty Media, RLM, is a liberty-based alternative to the corporate, lame-ass propaganda. That's the clap. You know, there are sources out there. Most people refer to those sites and sources as mainstream media, MSM, or news. They are neither. Come to reallibertymedia.com. Real Liberty Media, RLM Radio. Hashtag RLog. And how's he using that behind the woodshed? The schedule here where we come together to think and reason and raise expectations through thought-provoking episodes. So it's here at rlmradio.xyz. You can join the chat there. Our schedule lines out here. Uh, I'm running uh, this show normally on Fridays. I brought it up here to Monday for some reasons, plus that this is a seven-year anniversary of that uh, Fed-led standoff in Bunkerville. Normally, Mondays, uh, we have, hey, it's 420 somewhere, salute. Um, Mondays, it is, uh, it's all connected with Grimner and Moose Girl at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. So I ran way over in their spot. They uh, took the day, and so I took the rest of theirs and then some, along with what I had going. Um, come back Thursday, uh, Grimner and Moose Girl are here to free your mind or allow you at least the possibility of exploring that to do for yourself because nobody else can if you're a real anarchist and friday uh, i'm not going to be here next friday i'm going to take a little break in between here i got a lot of outdoor stuff to do and it um may not seem like it but it takes a lot of time to put all this together and i need to uh, refocus just a little bit and i'll come back this is nine episode nine out of uh, 15 episodes so we'll look for six more uh, as the spring and summer progresses uh, I have a, oh, I, I stopped, I stopped at, yeah, Friday's me, no, let's go to Saturday, the Redneck Dentist, and I'm going to play an outro that he's put together, uh, pretty good stuff there, a little description, and he's, uh, he's uh, new here, I, I can't remember how many uh, broadcasts you got behind your belt now, but very enjoyable broadcast, very interesting uh, I enjoy listening to Doc Mike, the Redneck Dentist, right here, Saturdays at, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. Sunday, come back along noon Eastern. We've got uh, Grimner playing the blues and Fast Fingered Fun. That's right, trivia. If you got the Fast Fingers, and can type, 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 type. Come on in. Join that chat at rlmradio.xyz and uh, introduce yourself. I uh, hope you're not easily offended. <laughs> yes. Where was I? That's right. After the blues, we're going to do that for three hours. And then I watch this. I'm going to be real tricky, and I'm going to change up the time slots to the left coast. That's right. Noon o'clock on the left coast is Hal Anthony coming from behind the woodshed. I'm going to show you how to open that can of whoop ass. Then we're back again to Monday this week, this day, this week. It's all done. Listen, uh. I think I'd like to finish up here just a little bit. I, I think I am at Bundy, and, and as I said, I got to this. I spent time with the Bundys. I was out on, on uh, had dinner up there, sit up the table with Cliven and and Carol Bundy. Uh, I'll never look at the forget the, the look in her eyes at the courthouse, looking back when she before all this was dismissed and they were released. She said the uh, wonderful thing about truth is it's so easy to tell. And as Isaac listened, you see a common spirit in her and, and Ammon, a very kind-hearted man, um, willing for self-sacrifice 
for uh, his fellow man. Brian Hyde also shares a, a great kindred spirit with him. There's so many different people that I met. Um, wonderful people. People that really care about this world that we live in. And, and that's what matters. And as I've uh, gone taken a ponder gander, let me go over here and find this uh, this link so we can play it and let it run out here. Uh, where'd you go? You? See, I thought I had it open. Uh, let me go back and do it again. I gotta click several buttons. Uh, and this. And. So I got two here. And Dr. Turtle. I think that's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> humans gather. All how that ties in so well with this uh, cattle gather back in 2014 at Rough Roundup. Let's, uh, let's open up Doc Mike. Come here, Doc. Where are you at? Open Sesame. Try again. Come here. It's spinning around. Not like no fast turtle I've ever seen. Wonder how the turtle... I've never been able to pull that story together. I thought that... Uh, Somehow there's a good, well, I, I said the, uh, this is a tale of the tortoise. No, <laughs> the tortoise, not the tortoise, the tortoise. <laughs> and the hare hiding, hoof to hide the truth. That's about what the Bundy Ranch situation from mainstream media and the government, uh, definite conspiracy. Wow, that can't be 10 minutes long. Or is this something else? I think I've chased this thing around. Let me close that. Try a double click. Will you open for me? Was it not going to open there? Let me try the other one. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, we had great fans. Oh, I forgot. Uh, Gary L. Yeah, top 10 countdown uh, after Hal Anthony. That's right. Here it comes. Over the water. Thanks for listening, everybody. Really good to be I'm your host, Ben. I got you. This is Duck Mike, the redneck dentist here on Real Liberty Media. Would you like to be entertained, enlightened, and or educated? Tune in to Real Liberty Media and catch live shows or listen to podcasts from diverse shows such as Behind the Woodshed with Hal Anthony, Evolutionarily Engaging Counter-Propaganda Tactics and Related Works, or you could listen to It's All Connected with Grim Near and Circle. They show you how all things are connected. Free your mind with Grimner and Moose Girl. See your way beyond the world as it has been defined. Sunday Blues with Grimner. Grimner plays all kinds of blues from great oldies to modern hard rocking blues. Join us in the chat room for fun times and a trivia contest. It's a lot of fun and has great conversation. A Ponder Gander with Vin E. To think and reason, raising expectations through provoking episodes. If you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. You can join us for the Top 10 Countdown with Gary L. and Gigi's Boo. They play the Top 10 songs from years past and provide some interesting historical facts and trivia about songs and the era. Take your pick. They are all great shows and you will have an opportunity to chat with other listeners and hosts of the shows. Come on over to join Real Liberty Media. See you there.